In action. No look low to Yo. Yo throws it down again. Two hand hammer for Yo. Let's get you ready to root on the boys in blue. This is Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's your host, Jason Shepard. Good evening, BYU basketball fans. Welcome into Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Discount Tire, America's neighborhood tire store. Tonight, it's a big one. The BYU Cougars back at home, hosting the number four team in the country, the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Now, the Cougars, they've had some time off in between games. They haven't played since last Thursday night when they beat St. Mary's at the Marriott Center. A fantastic win for BYU. Gavin Baxter, he was brilliant, playing his best game as a Cougar. The freshman who started the second half of that game, by the way, finished with 10 points, five rebounds, two blocks, and a steal. The win, coupled with some unexpected road losses last weekend by some other teams in the conference, moves BYU into a second place tie in the WCC at 5-2, and two, currently tied with San Francisco. Now, Gonzaga, no surprise, is in first place. They're 6-0 and in the conference. The Bulldogs, they've only lost two games all year long. Those losses were to Tennessee, now the number one team in the country, and North Carolina. The Cougars are 2-5 and five versus the Zags in Provo. And the last meeting between these two teams was actually in the WCC tournament when Gonzaga beat the Cougars by 20. BYU has lost six out of the last seven meetings against the Bulldogs. It's one of those weird situations where BYU actually has more wins against the Zags in Spokane than they do in Provo. And as far as this year's Gonzaga team is concerned, you know the names. Hachimura, Norvell Jr., Perkins, Clark Tilly. All of these players are dangerous individually, let alone putting them together on one team. Now, the Cougars do get some good news in the form of Josh Shear Hardnett's return. Shear's missed the past five games with a hand injury. Coach Rose said yesterday that he does expect him to play tonight. However, his role and how many minutes is still to be determined. But certainly, being able to add a player like Josh Shear, not only what he can give you on the offensive end, but certainly on the defensive end and on the ball defender, being able to have him back in the lineup, you're going to need it's all hands on deck taking on a team like the Gonzaga Bulldogs. All right, speaking of roles, Zach Selyus's role has been to be a scorer off the bench. The junior from Bountiful right now averaging seven points and four rebounds. He's second on the team in three-point makes with 30 and third on the team in three-point percentage. I talked with the man who is sometimes called Larry, Zach Selyus. Here's our conversation. Okay, here we go. In three, two, one. So in talking with your teammates over the last couple of weeks, when I would usually ask them how practice went, they'd all say good, and then I'd ask them why it was so good, and they would usually say because we've been really focusing on the defense. The defensive practice has been great. Has that been the case this week as well? Yeah, for sure. Now we're not only focusing on defense, but how we as a team can play defense, how we can help each other. You know, it's not just about one locking in and kind of being – all right, you're going to guard this guy by yourself. It's everyone guarding everyone together as a team and being able to you know, really focus on that, and that's, that's what's been good. You know, it's one thing to be able to have that type of performance in practice. It's another than to see it come to fruition on the floor, and that's what happened a week ago against St. Mary's. You guys were able to put that into play, and it worked for you guys. How much confidence did you get defensively from that game? I think we got a lot of confidence. You know, we realized how much we can come together. And you know, if one thing goes wrong, you know, it's just the next guy making a play. And if we're running around, you know, kind of with urgency and trying to, you know, make a play for each other on defense, you know, like we do offensively, you know, everything's going to work out. And I think that builds our confidence more and more. Well, staying with the confidence question, we're not just speaking of the defensive side, but being able to get that win at home and playing the way you guys did, what type of confidence did that give you, especially knowing that you're getting ready for a game against Gonzaga? Honestly, it's just home court advantage. You know, that, that's where the confidence builds. You know, when you have a great fan base that comes out and, you know, they're supporting you like crazy and you get that, you know, momentum and, you know, that builds your confidence. And, when you're playing a great team like St. Mary's, you know, you just kind of keeps going and keeps building, and then you got a, a week to be able to prepare for Gonzaga, and now it's just it's time to go out there and have the same thing. You know, just the confidence is still building. I you know it's just right, right from where it left off. You know, you just keep going. What are preparations for Gonzaga like? Is, is, it, is it different than facing any other team when you're getting ready to take on a team that you know is this good? I mean, it's – it's nothing different, you know. Obviously, they're 
a lot better team. You know, they're a ranked team. You know, you have to look at that in that perspective. But you know, it's just like any other you know team. You just got to go prepare. You know, and each day is a new day. You know, you're basically going out today, just focusing on practice, and then tomorrow focusing on shoot around, and then later you'll focus on the game. You know, you just each take it day by day. I realize that every year it's its own thing. But if you look since BYU joined the WCC, if there's a team that has had success against Gonzaga more than any other team, it has been BYU. Why do you think this has typically been a good matchup? I don't know. I think you know, BYU just had a history of you know having you know good you know, teams that we played against, you know upsets and other things. You know you had guys come through here that have made you know big jumps in their career and. You know, that's what happens to make a great BYU team and a great BYU legacy. Yeah. And so I think that's kind of why it's such a great, you know, competition between Gonzaga's because we have that legacy just like they do, and you know, we just keep it going every year. And I think that's what makes it such a great game. It's not always the case, but to be this late into the season and to be able to have a full week off in between games is somewhat rare. How nice has that been, and, and how beneficial do you think that will be heading into this game? It's like any other week, honestly. You know, you, all you're doing is you're just missing one game. You know, and you, know, you just you know, take that out and put it in practice, and that's, that's it. You know, and so you, it's been nothing different. You know, we're just going out, and you, know, you just basically get an extra day to prepare, and it's been good, you know, and I think we're ready. Catch up on any studies this week? Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to get there. <laughs> For you personally, how, how do you feel your game is progressing at this point in the season? I think it's, you know, you're just, like you said earlier, the confidence. Everyone's confidence just keeps building, and each game it gets better and better, and, you know, you just keep gaining more. And then also the maturity, of, you know, when you just, when you play a game, the, it all slows down as you go. Uh, instead of just running around, you know, you just kind of, go out there and you're more in the flow and I think that's kind of how my game and everyone else's has kind of changed throughout the season. Well, and uh, Coach Rose had mentioned that you're going to get another player back. Jashir's probably going to play. Not sure exactly how much and what role, but getting another player and talk about defense, a guy that's a good on-the-ball defender, be able to get him back is probably a, a nice uh, a nice boost for you guys as well. Yeah, no, for sure. And we've really missed Jashir and what he's brought to our team and you know, what he does for us defensively and even offensively. And, you know, it'll be good to have him back and to be able to, you know, play his game and to have that with our team. What kind of atmosphere do you expect? Nine o'clock tip, it's Gonzaga on ESPN. The place is going to be crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be wild. You know, I, I hope that it's, it's packed and I hope the rock section is going to be there. And, you know, I'm excited. It'll be good. Zach, thanks for the time as always and good luck. Thank you. That was Zach Selius yesterday after practice, getting you ready for BYU and Gonzaga tonight. We'll have the uh, game for you right here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Tip-off coming your way in just about 50, 55 minutes or so. Obviously, a lot with this game being on the the national networks. There is a game prior to, and uh, as BYU fans, uh, we all seem to know how the games before a BYU game typically (laughs) Seem to go along, and it just uh, it's just one of those things. But roughly in about 50 minutes, 55 minutes or so, we'll have the game for you. Big one as the Cougars host number four, Gonzaga. This season, BYU basketball and Mountain America Credit Union are changing lives. For each three-pointer BYU makes, Mountain America will donate $50 to the American Red Cross to help fund humanitarian services and programs. Coming up next, we're going to go to the Marriott Center. It's our courtside conversation with Mark Durant. Cougar pregame live, presented by Discount Tire, continues in a moment on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. This is Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Discount Tire. It's time for our courtside conversation with Mark Durant. Mark joins me. From next door at the Marriott Center side of tonight's game between BYU and Gonzaga. Good evening, Mark. How are you? I am doing well, my friend. It, you're just next door, but 
it's your it seems like you're far away and it makes me sad you know what we're always close in our hearts okay <laughs> that's the way i feel about it yes speaking of our hearts uh it warmed all byu fans hearts with the way byu played last week against saint mary's that was such a confidence booster for the team that that's a team we know the history between those two teams saint mary's historically has been a a, a nightmare matchup for BYU, and BYU came out and played a really good game, got contributions from a lot of different places, picked up a really nice win. What did you learn about the Cougars in that victory last week? Well, I thought it was a great win, and part of it is because uh, BYU has struggled against that St. Mary's system, and, and BYU handled it so well. And what I really liked was the how aggressive BYU was. TJ, I thought, was aggressive getting the rim. Guys did not settle. Yoli didn't settle for shots. And it really put the pressure on St. Mary's all night long. And then to play that kind of aggressive basketball and yet only have two turnovers, yeah. and that's amazing. And uh, they're going to need a similar approach to Gonzaga. You can't you, you can't sit back and Gonzaga. You have to take it to them. They're going to block your shot. And they're going to cause problems and stuff. But you have to go at Gonzaga and then be very efficient, not not turn the ball over. I mean, that's that's going to be the formula again tonight for BYU. Now, with Gonzaga, it's not so much about a system, but it's about just great players. I mean, you go down their list, it's it's an impressive lineup. you got you got NBA guys in there, and usually if you have one NBA guy, I mean, you're, you're going to have a great team. But these have multiple NBA guys, and, and you see just by the results this year and what they do out on the court and all the statistical categories that they lead, they're just, I mean, it's as good a team as you're going to see in college basketball. And so, again, I go back to you just can't make a lot of mistakes. You can't afford to go a couple of minutes without scoring against Gonzaga because they're going to just keep going and scoring. And if they miss shots, they'll just go create a basket, they'll go to the rim and get fouls. I mean, there's not going to be uh, lulls in Gonzaga scoring. So if you're going to have any hope of winning, you're going to have to keep up with them, keep scoring, and not have any droughts. And that's obviously a tall order for any team, let alone BYU. But, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've thought BYU had no chance before in, against a team like Gonzaga, and they've found a way to get it done. And I'm excited for the environment, and, and it should be a fun night. I, I'm kind of rambling on here, but I think, I, I mean, I'm never satisfied with the loss. I want to win, but I think with this BYU team, uh, if they can be competitive, they can be in the game, I think I'll be satisfied with that because Gonzaga is that good this year. And uh, I, I would just like to see BYU put up a really competitive game where they maybe have a chance at the end. But to expect more from, from BYU than that tonight, uh, that's pushing it even for me, and i am pretty got the blue-colored glasses on. Well, over the last couple of weeks, there's been a player that we've started to talk more and more about, and that's Gavin Baxter. The win over the Gales, to me... I, I remember it as the Gavin Baxter game. Ten points, five rebounds, two blocks, a big steal. He is starting. You can see, and he's and he. Uh, we talked to him afterwards. I know he was on post game with you guys, and then we talked to him on BYU Sports Nation. I think the next day, and he was talking about how things are just slowing down and starting to feel a lot more comfortable. We knew the talent the kid had, and now to see him start to put it together with more minutes, that is a bright spot for BYU certainly. Yeah, it's taken him a little while. He's had some bumps. I mean, what you'd really like is the, you know, the freshman get that feeling a little earlier in the season. But uh, you're certainly not going to, you know, not take it now. And he's he's getting that feeling now. He's getting the minutes now. And BYU will need him tonight. You saw what a difference he made in that St. Mary's game, just protecting the rim. St. Mary's in the first game, it was like a layup drill. <laughs> and, and with Gavin Baxter on the floor. They really struggled scoring at the rim, and, and even if he didn't get a block shot, he was altering shots, and they had to think about where he was at. If you look at the history of Gonzaga and when BYU is able to win up there, it, a big part of the reason they're able to do that is because kind of the the Gavin Baxter type player made big plays, whether it was Nate Austin or Corbin Kafusi or even Bronson Kafusi, just having a big body in there to, to try and match to some degree the athleticism and size of Gonzaga, uh, you need that. And so it's if, if Gavin can continue to play well and, and just make a little bit of a difference tonight and, and take Gonzaga a little bit out of what they want to do and contest some shots, Hachimura and 
and Clark, and I mean those guys are amazing players. But you just want to make it a little bit harder for them. I think we could go a long way, and so that's another reason why you might be a little bit more optimistic uh, because Gavin's playing better, and the team seems to really play better when Gavin's out there on the floor and and uh, being a force to be reckoned with. It's still early with him, but I, I certainly love the way he's progressing, and and that like you said, the game is. It's coming slower, Tim, coming yep. easier. The nerves are less. You're confident in your moves. You're confident what you can do. And part of it, Jason, when you're that young is you've got it all within you, but you kind of don't believe that you can do certain things. And then you, when you do it, you're like, oh, okay, I can do that. And it's almost like a light bulb moment. And freshmen, uh, as they get more playing time, have a lot of light bulb moments, and they realize what they can accomplish out there. And then it, then it becomes part of their game. While we don't know exactly how many minutes Jashir Hardnett is going to play tonight, we do know, according to Coach Rose, he's going to play at some point. What can his addition to this team do, not just tonight, but as, as this team progresses throughout the rest of the year? Well, Jashir, bring, like, like Gavin, brings some unique athletic uh, facets to BYU's team. Jashir does the same thing. I mean, BYU is not... Uh, physically uh, dominant on the perimeter. I mean, TJ's, he, he turns sideways and you can't see him. And uh, and Nick's undersized. And uh, McKay is strong but undersized and not overly quick. But Jashir is kind of built more like a, a running back. He's solid, so he, he, he's strong enough to play against really athletic guards. And he's quick enough uh, laterally to, to guard them. And so especially, especially when you're playing a team with the guards like uh, Gonzaga has, you need – you're just trying to match to the extent you can the athleticism, and you're not going to be able to match it completely, but it just makes it easier uh, for your team when you have guys that can can play individual man-to-man defense and and be strong enough to keep a guy off the boards. And I mean, all those things. And so Jashir has has some unique abilities out there on the perimeter that uh, a lot of the BYU guards don't have, and, and obviously it gives Dave Rose different options and di- different looks and uh, I'm excited to see Jashir back I mean that was a tough couple of weeks for him <laughs> we didn't know what was going to happen then he his hands hurt and so I hope we can just kind of ease in and, and try and find ways to help this team it's been a full week since BYU has played a game how beneficial do you think that can be when preparing to face a team like Gonzaga certainly you're going to want all the prep time you can get and you've had a full week uh, I think it's probably the most important thing i mean you saw when byu had a a few extra days having the early game against st mary's rather than the second game at st mary's you need to kind of put in your stuff and and be ready with a good game plan and the byu will have had a lot of time to do that so there'll be no excuses about well the the schedule treated us poorly here if the byu's not always treated well in the schedule but this little stretch is is really beneficial to BYU. The extra days against St. Mary's and now a whole week before Gonzaga. I mean, those are your premier games. You don't want to play them with only one day of preparation. And and so BYU is going to have a great game plan. Let's see if they can execute it and uh, and see if the crowd can get going. I mean, all these things, Jason, are going to have to come together. Greg and I have been calling a lot of games over the years and we've seen a lot of Gonzaga teams. I think we'd agree that this is the best, and uh, that that's pretty impressive to say that's because they've something. had some really, really good teams. Yeah, without question. All right, so Ken Garf, Honda, Nissan, and Volkswagen and Orm proudly present our keys to the game. Mark, what are your keys to tonight's game against the fourth-ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs? Well, I don't think you can go uh, more than maybe two minutes without putting some points on the board. I mean, if you're talking about three- or four-minute streaks, you're going to find yourself down 10 or 15, and you're, you're going to be out of this game. So there's that. I think part of that is really attacking the rim. Attack, attack. Everybody, TJ, McKay, Zach, Connor, uh, obviously Yoli, go to the rim, try and put pressure on Gonzaga. And uh, I think if they can do that, they can stay within range. The real threat for BYU is they have three or four minutes and Gonzaga hits a couple threes and you're down 10 or 15. I don't know if this team can get back in a game like that against a quality opponent like Gonzaga. Mark, great stuff as always. Look forward to hearing you on the broadcast with Greg coming up in a little bit. Thanks. All right, thanks, my friend. See you. There we go, our courtside conversation with Mark Durand. After a quick timeout, we'll check out some other scores in college basketball. Plus, we'll let you know how things went for BYU women's basketball, trying to go 12 in a row at LMU. 
things, uh, well, things didn't go the way the Cougars had hoped. I'll explain coming up on the other side. You're listening to Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Discount Tire on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's get you back to Cougar Pregame Live with your host, Jason Shepard. Cougar Pregame Live is presented by Discount Tire. Shep with you, getting you ready for BYU and Gonzaga. Let's update you on some other action earlier tonight. It is a final at LMU. BYU women's basketball had won 11 in a row, entering the top 25 this week at number 25. They go to LMU. Cougars were down 14 points with three and a half minutes to go. BYU fought all the way back, had a two-point lead with roughly 15 seconds to go. Unfortunately, the Cougars turned the ball over. LMU went the length of the court, scored a layup, was fouled. LMU made the free throw, retook the lead, would add two more free throws, and the Cougars' 11-game winning streak comes to an end. The Lions beat the Cougars 61-58. to This team, though, BYU team, they'll bounce back. This is a really, really good basketball team. All right, to the men's game. Halftime in Salt Lake City, Oregon, leading Utah 38-34 in Ogden tonight. Second half, about 12 minutes to go at uh, the D Event Center. Weber State leading the Portland State Vikings by a score of 60-48. to in the West Coast Conference, one other game going on right now. It is Pepperdine leading at Portland 2 to nothing. The game just underway. And uh, no score yet because it hasn't tipped off. It'll tip off in about five minutes. LMU hosting Pacific. Top 25. Houston remains with just one loss. They are 21-1. and one. They defeat Temple tonight 73-66. to 66. And number 17, Purdue, winning at Penn State 99-90. to 90. All right, that's going to do it for Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Discount Tire, America's neighborhood tire store. Coming up next, we're going to get you to the Marriott Center for the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show with Greg Rubel. You're listening to BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to get the inside scoop on today's game. This is the Zions Bank Cougar Pregame Coaches Show. For a financial slam dunk, Zions Bank is for you. The Coaches Show is also brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. Now let's head back to the Bryant Heating and Cooling Comfort courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, Cougar basketball fans. Welcome courtside inside the Marriott Center on the BYU campus here in Provo, Utah, as tonight the Cougars welcome the nation's number four team to town. It's BYU and Gonzaga, renewing a rivalry that has seen the road team win seven of the last eight meetings overall. Your play-by-play commentator, Greg Grubel. Joined, as always, by former BYU hoopster, well-respected local attorney, and social media sensation, Mark Durant. Uh, Mark, uh, BYU's played and beaten the Zags when they were undefeated and ranked number one in the country. And BYU did that in the kennel. I think the, the, the team that BYU takes on tonight just might be better than that number one team of two years ago. The Zags are the best shooting and scoring team in all of college basketball. They can lock it down on defense, and they are currently running a rough shot through the WCC. Yeah, I mean, you look at Gonzaga and you just kind of shake your head. And, uh, I mean, this is a team last week, I think, beat Santa Clara by over 50. They, they average over 35-point wins in conference. They, last 10 games, they haven't had a game closer than 12 points. I mean, these guys are, are really amazing. They played a lot of the preseason, had some big wins without Killian Tilly. They've got him now. Of course, Hachimura is amazing, Clark. I mean, go down the list. You've got multiple NBA guys, so you, you just got to ask yourself, well, do we have any chance at all? Well, probably not. I mean, Gonzaga's a, probably a better at BYU than it, in every way, but the question is, can be, BYU be better than Gonzaga tonight? I mean, maybe they can, and we've we've seen it before. And this year in this building with this crowd, who knows? And I love the way they played against St. Mary's. They need to be aggressive. They need to take care of the basketball. But it's going to take an almost perfect game against uh, this team, Gonzaga. And uh, they're fun to watch. But I'd like to see BYU really be, play well and be competitive. And I think 
if they can do that and just have a chance in this game, that will be a success because Gonzaga is just that good. Well, Dave Rose has had his share of success against the Zags, but his hands are always full and never more so, more so than tonight with Gonzaga coming into town on a 10-game win streak and a 27-game conference away win streak. Coach Rose's comments coming up next when the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show continues live from the Marriott Center on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're tuned to the Zions Bank Cougar Pregame Coaches Show. For more with head coach Dave Rose, let's rejoin your host, Greg Rubel. BYU and number four Gonzaga coming up. Staff at the top of the hour. Uh, since BYU joined the West Coast Conference in 2011-12, the Cougs five wins over the Zags tie St. Mary's for the most by any league team. Two other league foes have one win each. Five WCC teams don't have a single win over Gonzaga in the last eight seasons. Time now for tonight's pregame interview with BYU head coach Dave Rose, presented by Zions Bank for a financial slam dunk. Zions Bank is for you. And Coach Rose tonight discusses where the Zags are different this year than they've been, and it starts inside with Brandon Clark. And extremely athletic. You know, he, uh, he he can uh, go out on the perimeter and defend. He's he's really good around the basket, blocking shots. But on the offensive end, he just gives them uh, another guy where they can kind of space the floor a little bit and uh, – and he can put the ball on the floor. They're bigs, you know, traditionally have been guys that you play with their basket to basket and their four man is a stretch guy who can make threes. But this guy gives them a lot, uh, uh, a whole different look. And uh, and then the other guys are, are just, you know, they're just really playing well. I mean, Rui is, is having, you know, a, a player of the year type of year. And Josh Perkins is a guy who uh, just seems like he's been there forever mm-hmm. and uh, has, has kind of, you know, really run this team. So uh, I, we got our hands full, but uh, our guys are excited to play. I think we've had a great week of practice. I think we got a good plan, and hopefully your guys will be able to execute and play well. And Zach Norvell's a guy that, as you saw when he was a freshman, was never afraid of the big shot. Yeah, and, and you know, he's a guy that, uh, you know, could have probably played on most any team in the country his freshman year and redshirted there the, the year they went to the, the national championship game in the Final Four. So uh, very talented team, a team that really plays well together. Uh, you know, Mark Few, that's one thing about his teams traditionally is they really share the ball. Um, their offense is based on pass and catch and movement and uh, being able to, um, you know, shoot the, shoot the ball from the perimeter. And they, they lead the country or close to every year in assist. And so, uh, you know, we, we, we have a pretty good idea of what they're going to do. And hopefully we can get a, a, you know, a good plan together and the guys are, are rolling and we can get some stops. And, you know, a real key for us is, is when we get the miss that we limit the possession to just one shot. Uh, last week we had some issues, you know, especially early in the game trying to you know, track down those missed shots yeah. against St. Mary's. St. Mary's would take that thing and throw it back out and want to run clock. This team will grab that offensive rebound and go score it. And so uh, it, it's really critical that we rebound in this thing. And they are a very up-tempo team really on both ends. Yeah, they try to speed you up a little bit, you know, with some of the the way that they play defensively as far as uh, they, they try to funnel you into the middle and get, get uh, you know, Clark to block shots. I think he's the leading block shot, shot blocker in the country and uh, are close to it. And um, and so they'll press a little bit, extend full court, three-quarters court off of, of um, made free throws. And so uh, we've got to be ready for that. But, you know, I think over the years, the, the, the su- success that we have had, you know, against Gonzaga at times has been because we do uh, like to push the ball ourselves, and hopefully we can get our, ourselves into, you know, some good uh, lanes offensively and take advantage of uh, our ability to get to the rim, maybe get to the free throw line. That's the thing you just mentioned there. BYU has played the Zags as well as any WCC team ever has over the years. <laughs> yeah, and, and it, it doesn't add up when you start adding them up because they've got a few more wins than we do. But uh, I do know our guys are excited to play, and uh, and uh, hopefully we've got a good crowd in here tonight. And, and you know, it's, uh, it's a game that uh, uh, you know our guys can really give resistance to this team because this team has kind of just run through the first few games. And... Uh, you know, San Francisco played them really well at their place. And other than that, they've, they've kind of got off to an early lead and then just kept it. And hopefully tonight we can, you know, give them some real resistance and, and, uh, and challenge them and, you know, take this thing to the wire and get it done. 
It's going to be a great crowd. Uh, the students were camping, and they poured in here. Uh, when the doors open, it's already uh, there's already a good buzz in the building. Well, yeah, they should pour in here. It's freezing cold out there. <laughs> <laughs> They've been out there for, you know, uh, since Monday. So uh, uh, I know the student section will be rocking, and, and hopefully the you know our guys are up to the challenge tonight. We felt the value in the St. Mary's game just last week uh, of what this building and this crowd can mean to a team. Well, especially with this group. You know, I, I think that uh, – um, you know, every team is a, is a little bit different, but but this team I think really responds well to the energy of a home crowd. I mean, obviously we've played well here, we won quite a few games here, and uh, it's been it's been tough for us out on the road. But I I think we're getting better. I think we're getting uh, deeper into the bench where guys are coming and helping us. Gav did a great job. Nick I thought played really within himself last week. Uh, we get Jasheer back tonight. So, you know, hopefully we can – our best basketball is still ahead of us, and tonight's one of our best games of the year. All right, hope so too. Uh, coach, we'll talk to you post-game. Good luck against the Zags. All right, thanks a lot, Greg. That is BYU head coach Dave Rose and tonight's Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show. Title and escrow can be complicated with over 50 years experience in Utah. Provo Land Title has the expertise to navigate your buying, selling, or building project. Provo Land Title, making the complicated easier. The Cougar Tip-Off Show, coming up next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's almost time to hit the hardwood. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show. Brought to you by BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Siegfried and Jensen. Siegfried and Jensen has been helping Utah families for over 25 years. And by Utah Honda Dealers. Now let's head live to the Bryant Heating and Cooling Comfort courtside seats and join Mark Durant alongside the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. The Kings of the Conference have come to face the Cougars. Fourth rank Gonzaga visiting BYU in a late night tip. Greg Grubel, Mark Durant with you as our comment as your commentary tandem. Our statistician is broadcast intern Lindsay Peterson. Our BYU radio studio host is Jason Shepard. Our control board operator, Nathan Israelson. Our coordinating producer is Terry South. And our BYU radio broadcast intern tonight is Tess Anderson. Great to have you with us this evening on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. With the uh, WCC modifying its schedule to 60 games instead of 18. Tonight marks the halfway point of uh, BYU's conference campaign, and the Cougs are guaranteed of making the turn with a winning league record. They come into tonight at 5-2 and two solo second right now in the conference. After tonight, BYU will have played St. Mary's, USF, and the Zags a total of four times in eight games. In the back half, the Cougs will have those top teams only twice. Now, there's no taking anything for granted, but, Mark, if BYU can take care of most of its business, win or lose tonight, the Cougs should have a reasonable expectation of finishing in the uh, the top tier of the WCC and avoid anything earlier than a quarterfinal debut at the league tournament in Vegas. I'm actually pretty pleased with how BYU's played in the first round. They've won a couple road games. They've lost at two very tough places, and they'll have to come. Well, St. Mary's already came, and, yep. and San Francisco will have to come here. So I, I think they've actually done a nice job now. If they somehow win this game tonight, then you can talk about going for a conference championship. But without that, I mean, you've already mentioned the, the long win streaks. Gonzaga will likely win this conference. So then you're talking about really going for second place. And uh, I think they'd have a legitimate shot at that. And you're talking about at least getting to the to the quarterfinals. You could get to the semifinals if you take second place and you're playing on Monday. Yeah, double so, buy. I mean, that's something that you could really work out. I think it's reasonable over St. Mary's and San Francisco, but you just need to continue to play well. Don't mess up on the road. They've done pretty good at that so far, and and I like the way BYU's playing. Now it's about getting better and really competing tonight and uh, and going into the second half of conference play. All right, coming up after the break, my pregame conversation with Gonzaga assistant coach Brian Michelson as the Cougar Tip-Off show continues on the new skin BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's head back live courtside and rejoin Greg Rubel. 13-9 BYU, 5-2 WCC hosting 19-2 Gonzaga. 6-0 in league play are the Zags for a third straight season a short time ago here at the Marriott Center. I spoke with Zags assistant coach Brian Michelson about the role the Zags are on. 10 straight wins overall, 27 consecutive conference away wins. They're especially good away from home where they get every home team's best shot. You, you know every night, like you said, you're going to get the other team's best shot, and then especially on their home floor. And uh, obviously this is one of the special places in the country to play, and, and I talk to people about that all the time. We've gone to some of the great venues in the country, and, and this building is as loud and as tough as any of them. If you think the Marriott Center is special, what makes it so? The size, 
uh, the, the passion of the fan base. I mean, this student section that goes up three levels. Um, you know, and, and we've been to some big buildings, like I said. Uh, you know, Creighton was a great atmosphere, actually. It reminded me a lot of this, uh, even with the students right here behind the basket by the bench. Uh, Carolina was a great, great atmosphere, obviously a ton of history. But, but as far as volume, this building gets as loud as either one of those are probably louder. And then I really think that BYU feeds off that at home. I, I think that they're obviously a very good program, very talented. Um, but, but those runs at home just seem to have more to them. As much attention as the Gonzaga offense gets, and justifiably so, uh, would you say this defensive team has been among the better ones you've been involved with here? It's getting better. It's it's probably getting closer to last year's, which I thought was very good. The, the final four year was, I, th- I think, significantly better still. Um, but it's getting better. It's much improved from where we were in November, December. Um, and tonight will be a big challenge. We haven't faced an offense like this, uh, especially with a guy like Hawes and Childs, you know, probably probably since those um, mid-December games when we had the Tennessee, the Carolinas, the Creightons, the U-Dubs, back to back to back. So um, it'll be a really good challenge to see just how far the defense has come because it has improved. Um, but I, I do think a portion of those statistics have to do with not facing an offense of this caliber. Okay. Could you have envisioned the kind of season that Brandon Clark is having for you? At points last year, I think we saw it in practice, um, you know, and, and he was really, really good at points. And then you look back and you say, wow, you know, well, he was good against Tilly and Jonathan Williams and, and Hachimura, who are all obviously very good players in their own right. Um, but with transfers, it's always hard to know how quickly they'll hit the ground running. Even Kyle Wilcher maybe had some slow starts early on and, J3 and, and even Kelly Olenek who wasn't a transfer but had redshirted and, and I think he was just so seamless was the thing that maybe caught me the most is you know I think every game's been in double figures obviously you know multiple blocks in a lot of these games so just that he really didn't need any time to get going um, but last year you saw it in practice you saw how well he was playing and then he had had so much statistical success at San Jose State that he had done it in games so um, you know I, I would say it's probably a little bit of a surprise but but he proved it last year. You got a couple of injury speed bumps, but uh, what's been the value of being able, being able to start 21 straight games with the same group? Yeah, I'm not sure it's the, the group that everybody would have thought in, in July or August, but there, there's a lot of value in having consistency and having experience, and those are two things that this group has. And then, you know, like you, you mentioned, the two guys that missed significant, significant time in Crandall and Tilly ha- have done a great job trying to work themselves back in the lineup being aggressive but also realizing kind of the especially those top five what those guys had been bringing and being careful that to find that balance of not overstepping and and knowing how successful this team was when they were out and and also obviously being willing to come off the bench um, which has been a huge huge credit to those two as they've come back finally a thought from you on the caliber of the league top to bottom this year I think top to bottom, it's as deep as it's been. You know, a lot of times people refer to the big three, and, and rightfully so, with St. Mary's and BYU and ourselves. And, and I honestly think that, that San Diego, when they're fully healthy, which they're supposed to be starting Saturday, and obviously USF are, are right, right there with any of those. So I think you really have five very, very good teams. And then I think that six through ten, um, you know, is, is improved. I, and I think that that's a function of, really BYU just loses Bryant you know we lost a couple important seniors but we were obviously able to replace them with some really good players and St. Mary's is St. Mary's their their consistency is remarkable the way that guys improve year to year is remarkable because they were really the only program that lost a bunch of seniors with four guys all those other programs you look at return so many guys the USDs the USFs the LMUs the Pacifics uh, and then Pepperdine and I really think that that's helped our league um you know, top to bottom for sure. And, and then again, I think having five really, really good teams uh, makes a big difference. All right, Coach Michelson, really appreciate the time as always. We'll see you back at the kennel. Yeah, no worries, man. Take care. All right, that is Gonzaga assistant coach Brian Michelson. Time now for You Be the Judge, sponsored by Legally Mine. Legally Mine equals asset protection. Go to LegallyMineUSA.com to learn what you can do to stop lawsuits dead in their tracks. Here's tonight's BYU basketball trivia question. Since joining the West Coast Conference, BYU has seven wins over nationally ranked opponents. How many of those seven have come against a ranked Gonzaga team? The answer next as the Cougar Tip-Off Show continues live from the Marriott Center on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.
Welcome back to the Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's rejoin Greg Rubel. All right, the BYU and Gonzaga coming up. First up, the answer in tonight's You Be the Judge feature brought to you by Legally Mine. Here's tonight's BYU basketball trivia question. Since joining the West Coast Conference, BYU has seven wins over nationally ranked, that is, top 25 opponents. How many of the seven wins have come against a ranked Gonzaga team? Well, there have not been many of those wins over the years, Greg, and... Uh, and, and Gonzaga has been ranked, it seems like, forever. And so I know BYU's beaten them, what, five times in conference. I'm going to go with five of those wins. Oh, that's exactly right. Mark's powers of deduction are spot on tonight. So a five against the Zags, that leaves two for St. Mary's. That's right. We're just talking in conference. Yeah, well, no, overall, overall, all the ranked wins have come in league, as it turned out. So five against the Zags and two against St. Mary's wow. since BYU joined okay. the West Coast Conference. And that is You Be the Judge, brought to you by Legally Mine. Final words of the Cougar Tip-Off show next. You're on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.